So if you've been a part of my channel for a long time, you probably remember this discussion from a while back, but because Topo's been part of the news feed for a little bit now, I thought it would be nice to just re-upload this video and start off this discussion again, especially now that we know the movie's coming out, and there's probably a pretty good opportunity for Dragon Ball Super to come back in the very near future. So make sure to leave your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below if you've already seen the discussion video, but if you haven't, I hope you enjoy the video. Hey YouTubers, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell over by the subscriber button to notify you every single time I upload. Enjoy the video. And welcome back to another Dragon Ball Super discussion video theory slash speculation. And you guys know I wouldn't do one of these videos without the one, the only, the other half of the dynamic duo, my sugar daddy. MJ over MJTV, man. Why don't you say hello? Bro, I legit get goosebumps when you say that, man. It's like, oh, yes. It's like the tag team championships are on the line. And here we are, <laughs> man. We're trying to claim that throne. And thank you for having me on the channel. It's always, always a pleasure. All right. So, guys, this is something we've been talking about for a long time. Wanted to do this video, especially since we got somewhat of an official name for Topo's God of Destruction form. It's Topo God of Destruction mode or something like that, right? This kind of brings up an interesting question. One of the things that we saw from the very beginning is Topo was just kind of this overweight, middle-aged, like huge, Wolford Brimley mustached guy who's, uh, you know, th sitting around throwing up all this justice nonsense and whatnot. And then he kind of is like, okay, it's done. I'm going to be jacked now and I'm going to turn into a god of destruction. And it kind of left everyone thinking like, wait a minute. What is this? Like, how does this actually work with all the gods of destruction that we've been seeing throughout this entire series? You know, the other 12 that they introduced. Do they have some kind of forms that they're just not showing? Because, I mean, why would they have to bring out that form? And then it kind of goes back to the whole Battle of Gods arc in Dragon Ball Super where even Beerus is sitting there going, you know, I'm only using a certain percentage of my power, which, you know, power scaling can be danged. <laughs> you don't really know exactly how strong he can be, but is it possible that Beerus and Shampa and all these other people have these transformations to make themselves look a little bit more menacing. It's not like the first time we've seen a kind of seemingly weak person like Beerus is skinny, Shamp is fat, Belmont's really skinny, and none of the other gods of destruction look all that menacing besides maybe a couple of them. Is it possible that they can all turn into these buff monsters or some kind of iteration of it? So MJ, what are your thoughts on this? Is this something you would like to see or is it something that, you know, it's something that should only be for Topo? I think it's, in it's, it's an interesting idea because you go back to Battle of Gods and you go back to what happened with Goku there. And a lot of people have always wondered, you know, Goku keeps getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And he's still just not at that level of Beerus yet or he's rivaling Beerus. And it makes you think, gee, how much was this dude really using on Goku? Like this dude's shits were probably more uh, intimidating than the actual fight with Goku, <laughs> right? But um, no, it's like, okay, what if maybe, maybe, maybe he has an extra transformation where he could see utilize more of his power, kind of like a Frieza thing. Maybe he is in a suppressed state, you know, and then like his full power state is something that he would power into. That's not too out of the realm of impossibilities because we've seen that with different characters, like I just mentioned with uh, Frieza. So it would be cool to see if that's what going on there you know all the gods of destruction are kind of like in a suppressed level of power and then when they actually get serious they do have a transform state where they're able to utilize every bit of their power i think that would be a cool idea i don't think it's necessarily the case though i think with topo it was supposed to be just a a one shot kind of thing with him i guess because I think what they were trying to go with uh, Topo was that they wanted to change his appearance to not only show that he is a different character entirely, but just to show that he's more intimidating, like you mentioned. Now, that could still go for the other guys of destruction, like you were saying. I just don't think they're going to do it, but with Topo... He dropped the whole dabbing. <laughs> he dropped the, you know, he dropped that whole justice persona. And then I think they just wanted to add a little bit of extra flavor to that, you know, by giving him an actual change in appearance to kind of go with that new attitude. However, though, however, though, this is something that we talked about before, and that is with the Universe 3 or 2. I think Universe 2 got a destruction, right? Helice, if that's your name. 
uh, we mentioned that maybe what if she was a former Kamikaze Fireball because of her relationship with the Kamikaze Fireball? What if she was a former member? What if she has a transformation? And I think we did a video on this a while back that maybe this is something that goes along with the other gods. What if they have transformations? And what I'm getting at here is during the Tournament of Power, Elise kind of depicted a very good working relationship with the three uh, magical girls. And me and you discussed the possibility that because of their relationship, maybe she was a former member. And that could actually show that maybe Elise has a transformation. Who knows? The possibility is there. I mean, Dragon Ball's all about transformations when you think about it. <laughs> <laughs> I, You know, the one thing I love about that is... You know, we got to see Topo go into this transformation. You know, justice is gone. All that's left is survival or whatever. He actually said he ripped off his shirt and he went into this transformation. Everyone's like, oh, man, Topo, you've decided to actually do this. And at the time, of course, this didn't really pan out that way. But at the time, I felt like, okay, he's never going back. I think that that was the big weird thing about that is like, he's never going back to who he was before. This is now his God of Destruction mode. He's kind of embraced it. Of course, that wasn't the case. As soon as Vegeta beats him, he kind of, he kind of is thrown into the stands and he's back to his normal form. You know, kind of the overweight Wolford Brimley type of guy, not super jacked anymore. And it just makes me think, that kind of just feels like a transformation, a mode or whatever they want to call it, but it feels like a normal transformation. And why is it that Topo has it when none of these other gods of destruction have even mentioned it or anything else like that? I mean, nobody was concerned about it. Nobody in the god of destruction realm was concerned about it. It's kind of strange that they probably should have mentioned something about it. Like, they keep talking about Goku's Ultra Instinct form. Like, they probably could have been like, oh, man, now he is a god of destruction. And then that would have kind of solidified this theory. Like, this is something they could all do, but they all have been kind of reserving their power the same way that Topo has. Of course, I'm not really sure how that really goes into the grander scope of this. But really, I think it would have been the best thing for the show. It would have given us an idea that these gods are even more powerful than they actually look. And that fight, the preliminaries in both the a manga and the anime, wasn't even them going at their full power. Beerus and uh, Shampa fighting in the ma the manga and the anime is not them going at their full power. And you can imagine the destruction that they can cause if they are actually going at each other in these transformations that they have on the side where they're covered in this Hakai energy and everything that touches them, however logically that works, everything that touches them kind of just disappears. Like, how do you even fight someone like that? I think that that would be kind of cool and... I just I'm not sure, but it's just a way that they can continue the story, continue the transformations and the build up if they ever bring the show back and these other gods of destruction or Beerus and Shampa or something have to prove their worth at some point. Especially starting to look like that Goku is going to surpass Beerus at some point during all of this nonsense. Like Beerus is at least going to say, if they're not gonna fight again, at least say that he believes that Goku is actually stronger than him. It's a really nice arc for Goku, and if they ever brought back the series in the right way, then we can put Beerus and Shampa in these trans transformed states, actually fighting to the best of their ability, but unable to beat the antagonist because Goku is still the strongest person out of that entire group. I really kind of like that idea, and it would kind of add to the spectacle of any future series, in my opinion. I did a video a few days ago talking about Ultra Instinct and what it actually accomplishes and the idea is that Ultra Instinct is just a whole lot of shine, no substance and it's a, it's a, it's a toy, you know what I mean, that's basically what it is but I talked about how it actually does conclude some character arcs and you brought it up, you know, Beerus and Goku's character arc kind of concludes with Ultra Instinct and him finally surpassing him if it really is stated to us that he did but okay, so my friends and I, Mayo, BG, I know you've talked to BG, we did a funny little thing where we were counting all of the transformations that we've seen in all of Dragon Ball all the way up to uh, up to Super. We didn't count the video games. We just counted, yeah. So with that being said, if I remember correctly, because I wasn't the one who wrote them down, this may be for a future video, but I'll just mention it here. Dragon Ball Z, if you count just the show itself, villains and everything, has like 38... 39 transformations and then with super if you count villains and everything it has and even the side characters it has like 41 right and then the movies have like 20 something 
and then GT had like 17, I think, or like 15. So if you count all of that stuff, you're looking at a hundred plus of the transformations in the entire series, the entire franchise. So again, just to answer your question, I would not be shocked, Mark, if something ever came out saying that these other guys of destruction have a hidden realm of power that they can access by undergoing a transformation similar to that of Topos because it may logically make sense. Maybe that's why uh, Beerus is so suppressed against God Goku and Battle of Gods. Maybe that's why um, when him and Beer, uh, when Beerus and Champa fight, you know they're going to destroy the whole universe and stuff. But maybe that's not their full power, and that's just their suppressed state. And then again, the whole Healy's and uh, if that's even her right name, I'm, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. <laughs> the whole uh, God destruction of Universe Two and the Kamikaze Fireballs. There is some evidence there, just a little bit, that may indicate to these guys having a change of appearance. You know, a, 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 I guess a state of being where they can access everything. You know what I mean? And again wouldn't be out of the realm of impossibilities because this show already in itself has hundreds of transformations so <laughs> you know the, the the thing i really like about this is it doesn't have to be the logic that they were thinking about right now because it doesn't have to be that way this could be just a unique transformation to topo that's all they ever intended it but because they introduced it they kind of opened up the door for all of these other gods of destruction to have certain transformations. And look, I'm going to have to be the only one here. I don't know. But I would love to see freaking Beerus and Shampa have some kind of transformation that makes them look that much more badass or maybe even more silly. Can you imagine like Topo or I mean, Shampa's transformation is just like him fatter or something. And it's like. He, he gets, like, super big, but he's, like, super fat, too. So it's, like, but covered in the Hakai energy or something else like that. And then and then Beerus just gets, like, freaking ripped or something. And it's just them. When you, think, the, when you say <laughs> Beerus getting ripped, it makes me think of fan art. But I can't deny how cool it would be to see done in the anime where maybe he rips, like, his, uh, what is it called that he wears over his neck? The... Yeah, the, the little yeah, like, the little uh, I can't necklace. Yeah, thing he he, like, he, he, he rips called. that off, and he gets a like, rip, and he's covered in the purple Hakai energy. Like that would look cool. It looked fan arty, but it would look cool. <laughs> uh, he's like he's covered in it, but like maybe the same way that Topo has the God of Destruction symbol for Universe Eleven on his chest. Yeah, he rips that off, but like his his uh his chest has that symbol on it as well. That'd be dope. Like, those that'd little be dope. dots. That'd be dope. Yeah, like, type of that like so it's not like it's gone at all but it's just like a representation of it on his body or something that that would be cool i uh, all of that's really fan art and fan theory ish but i i have to say i would i would i would geek out and uh, according to like i said earlier you know he busts out this transformation and he could still be at least in the logic of the series going forward be completely owned and Goku could still step up and win because Goku at this point is stronger than Beerus. Perfect. I would love that. You know, but yeah, uh, maybe that's just me. I'm sure there's a lot of people who don't like that idea at all. Anyway, guys, I hope y'all enjoyed the video. Do not forget to go down to the description section below. Hit that link to go subscribe to MJ. Guy makes some really awesome, fantastic Dragon Ball content. Also, make sure to like, comment, and to subscribe onto this channel. Hit that bell for by the subscriber button to notify you every single time I upload. It's been real.